This is Sean with Gate City Foundation Drainage. We are on a job today in Greensboro. We're back working for the pool guys. And so they are actually out here today doing this panel drain right here. And so they're doing a bunch of replacing a micro channel along here as well. And what we're doing is we are getting the drainage pipe in place and we're gonna drop it into this little drainage basin here there's a knockout right there and then this pipe is going on down to a, a large storm stormwater basin and so I'll talk more about this coming up here in a little bit but for now we're trying to get this rolling they are using a commercial channel drain instead of the one that comes from Lowe's and this is a fitting that comes from Lowe's here and it looks like the profiles are the same but this one's got this inner edge right here so let me show you how I made this work so I've got my oscillating tool here and I'm just gonna cut this off right here okay so now that fits right there the only problem is we have these little edges right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those out of the way as well. Okay, so I like that a lot better because it's gonna free flow just a little bit better, less stuff to, to have debris hang up on. So let's get this back over to the trench that we're working on. All right, so I wanted to talk about what's going on here. Usually when we go in at a 90 in like this, we like to use a Y and a Street 45, which is called a combination Y. And that eases the angle a little bit, but since we're set here, we can't go back any further. We're way off. And I don't wanna go running uphill into this. So this is how we usually like to do it. But since we're limited on space, we're going to be using this one, which is called a sanitary T. So that'll get us a much bit more direct line into this main drain here. So that's a little bit of our decision making process when it comes to fittings. All right, we, we, we got this sanitary T set in. How are we doing for fall, boss? We got a good bubble or two. Easy. Full bubble. Nice. What do you have to say about that? And they ain't gonna get no better than that. Yep. <laughs> That's how we like it. That's it. It's worth mentioning here that we do use a lot of plumbing materials and plumbing techniques in our drainage solutions. And so let's talk for, about that for just a second here. These are sanitary teas. And in plumbing applications, you're not allowed to use a sanitary tea laid on its side like we're doing here. There's a few reasons for this. The first is that in plumbing applications, you need to maintain a quarter bubble of fall, no more, no less. The reason is you only have one flush worth of water. And so if you have more than a quarter bubble of fall, the water, the fluids will outrun the solids in the one flush. And so the sanitary tea laid on its side like we're doing here is gonna slow that water down too much in a plumbing application. 
Here in a drainage application, we're fine laying sanitary tees on their side like this because we have a full bubble of fall and we have thousands and thousands of square feet of service area worth of water coming rushing through here. The other thing that we have going on here is this is four inch pipe. So this pipe is way overkill for what we're trying to accomplish here. So even though you're not allowed to lay sanitary tees on their side in plumbing applications, we're fine doing it with four inch pipe at a full bubble of fall in our drainage systems. All right, this is where we're at. We've got our catch basin set. We've got our sanitary tee, sanitary tee right there. The problem is this catch basin had two, two pipes coming into it. So we've got an opening here. So I've got one of these guys and I'm just going to set that right in there and pack it in with dirt. And set that right in there, pack it in with dirt and we should be in good shape. Okay, I think we've got our pipe in, we've got the existing catch basin set, and we're working on the end over here. So we're going to be hooking into this channel drain coming across here, and this channel drain coming across here. So I'm a little bit concerned about water backing up and bubbling out of this catch basin, but this pipe is quite a bit lower, so that shouldn't be a problem. And I wanted to get the catch basin back because this is a logical low point right here near where this all this concrete is. So I could have just deleted that catch basin, but I think it's worthwhile to get it back in place and working like it was. Hey boss. Yeah. It's more better. It's more better. All right. It's more better, boss. We want to slide that channel in. I think we'll be yeah. What I'm gonna do is go on the outside and we'll get you to. Well, actually, oh. I can take and put a shovel right here and go on the outside, put that nipple in, and that piece from the outside. Okay. And that's her. And that's it. In cases like this, we are coming in before the channel drain guys are coming in. And so my clients often ask me, would it be better for us to do the work first or them to do the work first? I usually say it doesn't matter. And so one of the things I try to do is when we're coming in before someone else, like in this case, I try to get our work set really, really well. And that way they can just come right in with their stuff and hook into our stuff and everything works great. And so you can see us right here using the level and trying to make sure that channel drain, that's just a little short piece of, of channel drain that we're using as a, as a template. We want to make sure that channel drain is set right and going into our pipe at the right fall so that when the channel drain guys come by and do their thing, they can just plug and play and go and everything works really well. We are finished with this job, so we beat the concrete, the channel drain concrete guys here, the pool guys. So we're just st stubbed out right here with a little short section of channel, and they're over here working on the rest of this. So we got this pipe going down through here. We've got it going straight across here, 
and then we're elbowing sanitary ting into this catch basin we've got a stub out over here as well i just found a piece of scrap channel that they had and we're going in with that sanitary tea into the main drain line and so we're just trying to get cleaned up a little bit here and i never let my guys throw their trash in the trench before we cover it up i don't know why but everybody else does it but i don't like doing that so we dug up some trash so we're going to get rid of that as well so we're just trying to get cleaned up muddy mess today all right we got things hose down a little bit i forgot to bring some straw though so we're gonna run back over here or i'm gonna send ronald back over here to drop some straw in here but we got a lot of the sod back in place especially around the catch basin so that's really important to get that catch basin properly set in place and compacted and all the water that he just used to hose down all went in there and drained away so we know it's working so we should be in pretty good shape and the pool guys are over there doing their thing getting that channel drain set so they said they're going to be pouring some concrete tomorrow they're going to try to get this one done too set in place and ready so that's our part for them and on this particular one we beat them to it so we're just stubbed out here they were real happy with that and good to go So we are out of here. I am back out here. It's been a little while and I wanted to check on this. They, the pool guys got the channel drain set in here. And look at how nice that looks. And then here's our work. I guess it's probably been, I don't know, several weeks at least. And everything's been working really well so I talked to the pool company and they're really happy with the work we did so yeah it's looking really good out here over on this side of the pool apparently when I quoted this thing I had added or we talked about doing this short little piece right here and so they, they did call me back, or I called them and asked how they were doing. And so we had to come back and add this in, which wasn't that bad. But that seems to be working pretty well too. And, and look at this beautiful channel drain they put in here. So yeah, this pool deck is doing a lot better than it used to. This was another job from the pool contractors that we've been working with. I think this was about the third job we did for them. This was a little bit tricky because we were tying into an existing drainage system. And so anytime you do that, you really have to let the customer know that we can't guarantee that, that the existing drainage system is working. And now here we are about to send a bunch of extra water into it. And so I scoped out the existing drainage system. It looked like it was in good shape. It was schedule 40, so I felt okay tying into it. And that catch basin that was there, you saw how we, we added that as like a blind end. We didn't send our water through that catch basin because it loses all its energy when you do that, when you send water into a catch basin and then straight out of it again. So I like to do those catch basins starting from a blind end. And everything seems to be working really well so far. I've talked to them a couple times. Everything's good to go. As far as that piece on the far side, we had spoken about that, but it wasn't on the quote, and so maybe there was a miscommunication there. They offered to pay, pay me to go out there and, and add it in. Ronald offered to go out there and do it for me, so he got a little bit of extra work, and I sent him, and I never bothered to send them an, uh, another invoice for it. So everything's good to go on this job, and I hope you've enjoyed this, this video, and thanks for watching.